Hello, I'm Bob McDonald. Now you know what I look like. <laughs> I've been reporting on the environment since my hair was black and down to my shoulders. My very first job at the CBC was to write a one-hour documentary on climate change in 1977. And it has been amazing to be a science journalist during all that time and watch all of the predictions that they were making back then come true. They predicted the loss of ice in the Arctic, Greenland, and Antarctica. They predicted sea level rise. They predicted that storms would get stronger, that we would have droughts, wildfires, floods, shifting of the monsoons. It's all come true. In fact, it's come true faster than they predicted. It's also been a little frustrating as a journalist to witness inaction. Can you witness inaction? <laughs> and this is in part due to a well-funded and well-orchestrated anti-science campaign, climate denial, where misinformation and disinformation was put out into the public to put doubt, seeds of doubt, in the public mind, in the political mind, and in some cases in the media's mind, so that it would delay action and keep business as usual. And it worked. For more than 30 years, it's worked. Well, now climate denial is off the map because climate change is in our face. We're seeing it. I live in British Columbia, and we're dealing with forest fires now. And we're seeing floods, and we're seeing the storms. It's all come true. So I was getting a little depressed. <laughs> I was getting kind of down because all the stories coming out of the environment that I was reporting on are bad news. More loss of habitat, species going extinct, polluted air, polluted water. You want to go shoot yourself after a while. So I thought, OK, we've spent the last 30 or 40 years pointing at the problem. What are the solutions? So I wrote a book called The Future is Now. Solving the Climate Crisis with Today's Technology, which just so happens will be in the lobby as you leave. <laughs> what I wanted to do was put together the latest update on where we are with green energy. And I was delighted to find out when I did the research that all the technology we need to go green already exists. There are no new inventions needed to go to a zero carbon energy economy. It's already there. We know how to capture the energy of the sun, the wind, the geothermal energy, the tides, the waves. Energy literally grows on trees if we want it. There's no shortage of energy. There's more energy falling out of the sky in one hour hitting the earth than all of humanity uses in a year. It's out there. We just need to gather it up. So if the technology's there, why haven't we been using it? What's been going on? Well, we got a very nice demonstration of how we can change quickly with the pandemic. Think about it. There was an invisible threat to humanity drifting through the air that was killing people by the thousands. And four elements came together to fight it. One, science. The Chinese scientists, to their credit, when they identified the virus in Wuhan, they immediately did its genome, its genetic sequence, and they sent that out to the world. And there was a huge international effort, including here in Canada, to figure out how that virus infects your lungs and how it kills. The science was first. Two, industry came in and said, yes, we can come up with vaccines by the millions to inoculate people. Three, government stepped up to the plate and said, we're going to support the science, we're going to support the industry, and we're going to tell people to change your behavior, wear masks, wash your hands, social distance, and stay home at the beginning, lock down, because this stuff's in the air. And we did. The fourth element, the public, we bought into it. Now, there was still a small vocal group, especially here in Ottawa, that put out misinformation about vaccines and all of that, but they were a tiny minority. Most of us got vaccinated. And look, here we are. We're back in person again. And we were told to flatten the curve. And we did that. Those four elements came together. Science, industry, government, and the public. OK, climate change is another curve we need to flatten. And have the four elements come together. The science is there telling us it's a serious problem. Industry is there with green technology saying, we're ready. We can do this. Governments. 
Well, we've had 27 United Nations COP meetings where government leaders get together and say, yeah, it's a problem, we've got to do something about it. But the bottom line is, despite the progress, and there has been progress, our world emissions are still going up. So there's more to do. And the public? The public is confused and uncertain because there's misinformation around. Do you know that solar energy is now cheaper than coal? Isn't that amazing? The technology's there. So let's get on with it. There's a phrase I like. The Stone Age didn't end because we ran out of stone. We went from stone to metals, the Iron Age. And then we started mixing metals. We had the Bronze Age. Now we're in the Steel and Glass Age. Okay, we've had the Carbon Age that got us through the Industrial Revolution, and it's been amazing. Now it's time to get on to the Carbon Free Age. We can do that. Just like we fought COVID in only two years, we can move ahead quickly. And the final point I want to make is that this is more than an environmental issue, an economic issue, a political issue, a social issue. It's a human health issue. Because it's been estimated that during COVID, during the first two years of COVID, about five and a half million people died. But every year, between seven and eight million people die from burning fossil fuels, mostly from air pollution. In other words, more than twice as many people died from fossil fuel burning as died from COVID. We did something about COVID. Let's do something about carbon. Let's get on with it. The technology's there. Let's move ahead. Thank you very much.